A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thoughts. So he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusions. By thoughts I mean specifically chatter in the skull, perpetual and compulsive repetition of words, of reckoning and calculating. I'm not saying that thinking is bad. Like everything else, it's useful in moderation. A good servant, but a bad master. And all so-called civilized peoples have increasingly become crazy and self-destructive because through excessive thinking they have lost touch with reality. That's to say, we confuse signs, words, numbers, symbols and ideas with the real world. Most of us would have rather money than tangible wealth and a great occasion is somehow spoiled for us unless photographed. And to read about it the next day in the newspaper is oddly more fun for us than the original event. This is a disaster. For as a result of confusing the real world of nature with mere signs, such as bank balances and contracts, we are destroying nature. We are so tied up in our minds that we've lost our senses. And don't realize that the air stinks, water tastes of chlorine, the human landscape looks like a trash heap, and much of our food tastes like plastic. Time to wake up. What is reality? Obviously, no one can say, because it isn't words. It isn't material, that's just an idea. It isn't spiritual, that's also an idea, a symbol. Reality is this. You see, we all know what reality is, but we can't describe it. Just as we all know how to beat our hearts and shape our bones, but cannot say how it is done. To get in touch with reality, there is an art of meditation, of what is called yoga or jhana in India, chan in China, and zen in Japan. It is the art of temporarily silencing the mind, of stopping the chatter in the skull. Of course, you can't force your mind to be silent. That would be like trying to smooth ripples in water with a flat iron. Water becomes clear and calm only when left alone. So, will you try an experiment with me? Simply close your eyes and allow your ears to hear all sounds around you. Don't try to name or identify these sounds. Just hear them as you would listen to music. As when you hear a flute or a guitar without asking what it means.
and as and when I talk, just hear the sound of my voice. Don't bother about what it means. Your brain will take care of that by itself. Just let your eardrums respond as they will to all vibrations now in the air. Don't let yourself or your ears be offended by improper or unscheduled sounds. If, for example, the record is scratchy, okay. You wouldn't object if you were listening to it sitting by a fire of crackling logs. Let them ring. It's just a noise. And keep your tongue relaxed, floating easily in the lower jaw. Also stop frowning. Allow the space between your eyes to feel easy and open. Just let the vibrations in the air play with your ears. must understand that in meditation we are concerned only with what is, with reality, nothing else. The past is a memory, the future an expectation. Neither past nor future actually exist. There is simply eternal now so don't seek or expect a result from what you're doing. That wouldn't be true meditation. There's no hurry. Just now you're not going anywhere. Simply be here. Live in the world of sound. Let it play. That's all. sound, can you actually hear anyone who is listening? Can you hear any difference between all these sounds on the one hand and yourself on the other? Naturally, we use techniques and gimmicks to help the thinking mind to become silent, and one of them is the gong. 
It is a sound at once pleasing and compelling. It absorbs attention. But watch what happens when it fades out. The one sound becomes the many. The single tone is transformed easily and gently into all other noises. And that's how the universe comes into being out of the one energy underlying all events. So if you don't have a gong, you can use your own voice by chanting what Hindus and Buddhists call a mantra, that is, a syllable or phrase sung for its sound rather than its meaning. Chief of these is the syllable Om or Aum, called the Pranava or the sound of God, because it involves the whole range of the voice from the back of the throat to the lips. Take the tone from the gong and hum it with me. Now you can hear all sounds as Om. They're all at some point in the total range of sound, from the back of the throat to the lips, making a spectrum of sound as all colors are originally one white light. But don't ask what the sound is or what it means. Just hear it and dig it. Come with me again. explain again what we are doing. We are going behind words, names, numbers, beliefs and ideas to get back to the naked experience of reality itself. And at this level of awareness we find no difference between the listener and the sound, the knower and the known, the subject and the object, or between the past, the present and the future. All that's just talk. What is really happening is And 
you may wonder how I can keep the sound going for so long a time. It depends on regulation of the breath, which is basic to the art of meditation, and I'm going to show you how to do this and why. To begin with, just as you've been letting vibrations in the air play with your ears, let your lungs breathe as they will. Don't as yet attempt any breathing exercise. Don't force anything. Simply allow breathing. Now, is this breathing a voluntary or involuntary action? Or both? Or neither? Just feel it without taking sides, without words. And again, hear my voice as if it were wind in the trees or the sound of waves. Most of us are short of breath. We never really empty our lungs. But to make a long, complete outbreath, you mustn't force it. Imagine there's a large ball of lead inside your neck and allow it to fall slowly through your body to the floor, pushing and easing the breath out as it drops. Ease the breath out just as you settle and sink down comfortably into a bed. And when the ball reaches the floor, let it drop away as if to the center of the earth. Then let the breath come back, back in, as a reflex, without pulling it. And then imagine another ball of lead in the neck. And again, let it fall out, long and easy. again. Do you see what's happening? You are generating a great deal of energy without trying or forcing. Two things seem to be happening at once. First, the outflow of breath is simply falling, happening all by itself. Second, it's under perfect control. So from this practice, you learn to experience to realize that what happens to you 
and what you do are one and the same process. There is no real separation between one thing called you and another quite different thing called the universe. When you stop talking and naming, they're quite obviously one. So again, let your breath fall easily out. All the way. Let it come back on its own, and then out again. And now let's put the sound R on the next outflow. so that you have nothing in mind but oh. 